Greetings, and welcome to The Unconventional Path, Entrepreneurship and Innovation Stories and Ideas. I'm Bela Musitz, the host for this episode. This is one of our short video series podcasts where I converse with C-level business executives about building great organizations. These interviews were originally taped several years ago when I was the dean of the business school at Union Graduate College. I believe they deserve to be re-edited and presented to a much broader audience. So here's one of them, more to follow. Today's guest is Hugh Johnson. He is one of the world's most respected money managers and financial advisors. I hope you enjoy our conversation. So you, a number of years ago, you, you left uh, a big firm and sort of started out on your own. Yeah. And so what have some of the challenges been in, in kind of being out on your own? Well, of course, the first challenge is having the courage to try to figure out if you can do it and you can't do it. And I, I think, and then the second challenge is, is, is how you're going to meet your payroll with your American Express card. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's having the courage to do it uh, is, is certainly, the, certainly the first step. And I think where the courage comes from, at least it came from in my, my particular instance, is that I thought I had... Uh, I, I had a good idea as to what to do, a different way to uh, manage assets, to manage them effectively for both individuals and institutional investors. And I thought that only given time that uh, the world would realize it and be, be, the, be the path to my doorway. But believe me, the courage is number one, and number two is, is recognizing that you're going to go, at least initially, through some very difficult times, from very difficult times financially. And you know, just having the courage to to weather that, and the perseverance, really, st the stick to itness, uh, is is really one of the key essential ingredients. So it's a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. What was one of the biggest challenges you encountered? Well, of course, money initially is one of the biggest challenges. But um, you know, I I don't think that uh, you know there was anything particularly challenging in some one respect is that I had a lot of people. Uh, that joined me when we we actually left First Albany. We bought the company from First Albany, and uh, and then we had a lot of other people that joined me in that, and they were all as committed as I was. First of all, we all became, including myself, obviously, but became shareholders, uh, members uh, of the LLC. Became you know we had a stake in the in the success of the company, and you'd be surprised what that does to yeah. the kind of the attitude and the, uh, of, the, of the individuals, the other individuals that joined me. So very good, effective people working with me. We all worked together. We all worked very hard. And uh, that, that, that did a lot. But again, it's stick to itness is really the key thing. Yeah, through thick or through thin, through difficult times, which are probably at the start, you'll see plenty of difficult times or challenges. So often I hear you in various parts of the media, whether it be radio or TV, and there's a 45 second sound bite and you're talking about the markets and you take something that certainly sounds very very complex mm. and you reduce it down to 30 seconds that I the common man can understand how do you do that well you learn how to do that and I think the reason you learn how to do that is because you learn first of all um, uh, that, that everybody thinks this is an extraordinarily complex business uh, it's not uh, it's not a complex business. If you spend a little bit of time in it, you learn that it is very simple. And so being able to describe what is, seems to be a very complex uh, event uh, in very simple terms, in my judgment, is very easy because, indeed, everything in this world is very simple. You just have to know, you have to know enough about it so that you can, you can see the simplicity in it. There is nothing that I've ever seen that is too complex for people to understand. They can understand it if they take the time to, to really think about it and simplify. You know, I, 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 did a lot, I spent a lot of time studying metaphysics. I was studying philosophy. And if you can take uh, Process and Reality from Bertrand Russell, uh, which is the discussion of his metaphysics, and understand it, and I think just about everybody, if they spend the time, uh, can do that, uh, you can, you'll see how really simple everything in the complex, so-called complex world of finance is really very simple. 
Has, has technology made it easier or more difficult for a small firm like yours to compete in a it's, I mean, that, it, it really has leveled the playing field. Uh, the, the, the edge that a, an army of analysts uh, would have over a small firm with one or two analysts was great. Uh, now it's not so great. We can get all of the information everybody else can get. And again, what makes the difference is being able to um, not only have the data, but to be able to organize the data and to use it effectively, to be smart enough to know what counts and what does not count. You know, when I and we talk about our classes over at Union, uh, that's one of the things that I start out with. I talk to all of the students. I say, one thing I want you to learn, is you're going to have so much information coming at you. And I'm only going to tell you this now, but most of it doesn't count. So the one thing you're going to learn in this class is what counts and what does not count. How simple this is. By, by being able to identify, of all the plethora of information that comes at you, what counts and what doesn't count, and that's what's going to make you good uh, versus all your competitors, and there are plenty of them out there. So does you, Johnson, have a secret book that says here's the important data and here's not the important data? How do you learn yeah, that? Well, you know, you, you learn that, I think, over time. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of battle scars I have from, from learning it. You know, this, there is no book. Um, it's, it's over time. Uh, you make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you, you learn from those mistakes. Uh, people uh, like to say that it's, uh, this, you know, some sort of intuition that I might have that makes me particularly good at the process of uh, managing assets. It's really, it's really not so much intuition. It's, it's having made a lot of mistakes, having learned from those mistakes, and having developed good judgment on the basis of that. Everybody has to go through this. Everybody that starts in this business is overwhelmed and intimidated. But believe me, get into the game, get into the business, make those mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and that will develop good judgment. We'll call it maybe even wisdom after a while, but good judgment, and that really just takes time. Once again, it gets back to the most important ingredient, and that is perseverance. Get into the business, stick to it, you will learn, you will get better, everybody can do it. You spend a fair amount of time teaching, so I'm sure you must have students come up to you and say, you, I want to get into the business you're in. Yeah. What kind of advice do you give them? Well, the first thing I give them is, um, you know, first of all, prepare yourself. Uh, uh, there's lots of things you can prepare yourself for, and of course, by the time they come up and see me and say, I want to get into your business, it's too late for a lot of that. A good liberal arts education, good philosophy, English, history, you name it, is always helpful. Uh, a good education at uh, Union Graduate School is very valuable. Um, sharpen your quantitative skills. Don't overlook statistics. Don't overlook accounting. All of that's very important in my business. And then it gets to the point of getting a job in our business. And I tell every student, uh, prepare yourself for one of the most humbling experiences of your life. You're going to get turned down at a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses are going to say no. But once again, perseverance is the number one thing. And just persevere. Eventually, you will get a job. You probably won't like the job for the next first three to five years. But again, persevere. And in time, you'll not only like the job, but you'll probably do well at the job. And indeed, you'll probably prosper. So often, I hear you in various parts of the media, whether it be radio or TV, and there's a 45-second soundbite and you're talking about the markets, and you take something that certainly sounds very, very complex, mm. and you reduce it down to 30 seconds that I, the common man, can understand. How do you do that? Well, you learn how to do that. I think the reason you learn how to do that is because you learn, first of all, um, uh, that, that everybody thinks this is an extraordinarily complex business. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not a complex business. If you spend a little bit of time in it, you learn that it is very simple. And so being able to describe what is, seems to be a very complex uh, event uh, in very simple terms, in my judgment, is very easy because, indeed, everything in this world is very simple. You just have to know, you have to know enough about it so that you can, you can see the simplicity in it. There is nothing that I've ever seen that is too complex for people to understand. They can understand it if they take the time to, 
to really think about it and simplify. You know, I, I, I did a lot, I spent a lot of time studying metaphysics, I was studying philosophy. And if you can take uh, process and reality from Bertrand Russell, uh, which is the discussion of his metaphysics, and understand it, and I think just about everybody, if they spend the time, uh, can do that, uh, you can, you'll see how really simple everything in the complex, so-called complex world of finance is really very simple and easy to explain. Just take Thanks for joining us today. We hope you found this episode interesting and thought-provoking. If you have questions about what we discussed, please get in touch with us. Our email is bela.and.mike at gmail.com. Also, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe or follow the show. So until next time, signing off from upstate New York. See you all soon.